Welcome to Shagar, the gateway to K2. Quite early in the morning and I'm heading to Shigar. It looks like it's going to be a nice day, but it's pretty cold right now. And it's a shawl. So if you come here, even in summers, it can get quite cold in the evenings and the mornings. So make sure you bring some warm clothes with you. It roughly takes between two to two and a half hours to come from Khaplu to Shigar. Or if you're coming from Skardu, it will take roughly an hour. The road is actually not in a bad shape and they're building a new one from Skardu that will cut the time shot into half. You can't go to Shigar and not stop at this beautiful spot. This is the Serfaranga cold desert and it's quite early in the morning. The light is very low. I, honestly, I'm a little speechless because it's really weird how this looks without light. And surprisingly, I'm not cold. So I'm gonna enjoy this a bit more, walk around, play around, and then head to Shigar. But if, you, if you're going to Shigar, this is on the way, and you should definitely, definitely do this. It's such an interesting landscape. See you in a bit. Shigar is the last town before K2 base camp and it is quite famous with the mountaineers but it has a lot more to offer than just that. Welcome to Shigar Fort. No visit to Shigar is complete without a visit to the Shigar Fort. It's been taken over by Serena and it's an amazing place to stay. But even if you don't stay, I would definitely recommend having one meal there and definitely going around the place they do organize tours. This is a four and a half centuries old building and they have renovated it. It's actually a community project. It's not just a hotel because they employ local people, they use local recipes, they use all the local produce whenever they can, because obviously there's nothing here in winter. So I'm gonna show you my room. I'm actually not sure if they've made up. I'm a messy sleeper. Let's just hope they have done that. Come with me. Ooh, and before we go, I want to show you something. So these are all the original rugs from this area and they have also taken the time to basically bring them in and display them. I really love that. Let's go. I really hope it's made up. Now that I've seen the room, and I love it. I mean, look at these little boxes. They're like the original ones. And look at that. Oh my God, the windows even. And it's really nicely made. That's the best part. So I am going to show you the terrace, which I have exclusive access to. Let's go there. Go. This one's my favorite, by the way. This is my private terrace for the next two, three days. And I'm the king here. I 
I almost fell asleep and then I realized I didn't actually tell you the history. So this place was built four and a half centuries ago. The name of this place means Palace on the Rock because it was built on the rock. You can still see a bit of it protruding when you come into, into the residential area. With time, it sort of fell into disrepair. So this is still part of the, the royal sort of heritage of Shigar. It was donated and it was renovated and converted into a nice hotel and a museum. So even if you don't come here to day I would still suggest you come here for food because they have amazing amazing food here honestly oh I, I just love it and they're trying to preserve the recipes which have been running in this area for ages so I hope that was a bit of history the rest you can read online I'm gonna go to sleep now and I will see you guys in the morning night night Good morning. Slept like a baby. There's a stream flowing right by the hotel and it's so soothing to hear the sound when you're sleeping. And I think there was part of it which was sleeping in this amazing four and a half centuries old fort. I just loved it and I feel so fresh. I can't wait to explore this place a bit more. I'll show you. So I requested the chef to prepare some local food for me. And the most amazing thing about this is all of this is locally sourced from yogurt to granola. I mean, they make everything from local ingredients. They even have their own little orchard here. But the thing that I love the most about this place, the view. I'm gonna go eat and I'll show you the food after that. I'll see you in a bit. The fort is really intriguing. Some of its walls are as thick as a meter and made of solid stone. And it's a labyrinth of small ways that I'd go through different buildings with beautiful little terraces tucked in and it even has its own little mosque. I'm sitting in the orchard of the Serena Sugar Fort. It's really peaceful and the day is really beautiful. I love this little pavilion in the middle of the orchard. It just has like a really different feel. So I'm going to explore Shigar a little bit more. There's a couple of mosques there. Uh, there's a cold desert that will do as well. So come with me. I'll also show you a little bit about the fort. It is time to head out and see a bit more of Shigar. So we'll start with the Killing Rong Mosque. And it's entirely made of wood, something very specific to this region. So I wanna go inside and see what it's made of. Killing Rong is a small mosque from 17th century. It has two levels and in its design and architecture, the influence of Buddhism is pretty obvious. And if you're coming here, you gotta say hello to some special friends here. They're also locals. Oh, she doesn't want to say hello. Let's go to the next one. Hello. All right, I'm not getting a lot of traction here, sadly, so I'm gonna go. Our next stop requires a bit of traveling within the streets of Shigar.
This is Ambrook Mosque and it's special because it's one of the first few mosques in the Shigar area and it was built by Iranian Kashmiri craftsmen and it's also a mosque built with wood. Really beautiful and the backdrop of mountains is just spectacular. Ambarik Mosque is actually the oldest mosque in the entire Gilgit Baltistan area. Part of the fun is to try local food and I've come to a local family who've made food, you know, sort of like old recipes and stuff. So I'm kind of excited to try that. And it's also a nice way to meet local people, you know, get to know about their lives and all. And honestly, like after that amazing breakfast at Serena, I have high hopes and I'm pretty sure they will be met. By the way, food here is nothing like food you see in the rest of Pakistan because there's quite a lot of, you know, influence on how things work here in winter. So let's see what it is and let's go because I'm hungry. I'm sitting in the kitchen of Athena Heather and she's a local lady who's preparing some local food for us. I'm quite excited. It looks really great. Let's see what comes out. So Athena has gone like way above and beyond. I can't believe all of this is just for me. Uh, it looks really great. I'm not going to waste any time talking to you while this is waiting. But before you go, this is something interesting. It's a utensil entirely made of stone and they use it to, to cook food here. I'll talk to you in a bit after I've eaten all of it. So thank you. I'm going to finish off the food with some tea. It is actually something interesting. It's like green tea, but it's made locally. Um, there's a herb that they use for it. So I'm going to try that. And then I'm going to take you around sugar. So I'll see you in a bit. We've run out of petrol. So this is us refilling the petrol. Fun, isn't it? Just outside the city, this is the bridge of Han Kui. It's abandoned. There's a new one right next to it, but the views from here are apparently nice. Let's go see if that's true. It is quite a beautiful spot with this absolutely calming and serene sugar river just passing by and these beautiful mountains all around you. I'm not done with sugar yet. We have one more spot to explore. The last stop for the day is Blind Lake. It is a little bit of a drive outside Sugar City, but I've been promised good things. So let's see, the view is already amazing on the way. So I'm hopeful. The road to Blind Lake is actually quite rough and I would definitely recommend going on a four x four. And you can also camp there if you want. So it took us about 30 to 40 minutes to get here and the place on the way, I mean, you could see in the entire valley, it was, wow, I love it. This is a good place to come for sunset. A big part of this experience for me has been to see how small I actually am compared to the landscape. I mean, I'm in a huge valley. And some of the boulders here are bigger than me. It's truly stunning. Oh, life lessons like these, eh? So it looks like I left it too late and the sun has gone down. And the lake has become dark, but it's still a spectacular view. Like you can see the entire valley from here 
all the way at the back. So I'm still happy I came here. Look, isn't this gorgeous? After that long beautiful day, it's time to get some food and then head to bed because I am tired AF. It's my last evening here in Shigar. Honestly, the food has been amazing. So this is mutton. This is an interesting version, sort of like a pide, but a local version of that. And this is a local pasta made with spinach and obviously a staple of every Pakistani table, fresh roti. So I'm going to go munch on this and then go get some sleep because I'm really tired after all that trekking. This is sadly all my time in sugar. I've had such an amazing time. Honestly, I didn't really expect that much. But, oh my God, this place is just so amazing. So, bye-bye. This is Brown Boy Travels. Do subscribe, like, and share. You can also reach me on Instagram. I'll see you in the next video.